The three decades I've spent in the food industry, making food, creating recipes, feeding people, inspiring minds and truly, hopefully, changing souls for the richer has been a journey that's been most enriching for me as every day as I cook for people, as I uh, create dishes that will um, titillate their taste buds, uh, give them memories that will last forever, that make their special occasions more special still. The challenge is to cook food that will please many and it's not an easy challenge. So my three decades have gone back like a flash. I may look like a dadaji but I think hopefully like a smart 18 year old and I connect with the times, I connect with the people we live in and the world I share with others. So cooking Indian food in America is not as easy as we think it is, especially if you have the brain I have. I am not comfortable with butter chicken, dal makhni, paneer makhni. I have grown up with the best kharka khana. I am proud to be Indian. I am what the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, uh, calls a good Indian. Because our good Indians must celebrate every day desi khana. The food of all regions of India, all uh, classes of India, all parts of India, but more importantly of every Indian. And what we eat in our homes daily is simple ghar ka khana, which is what the world is missing in Indian food. So for me, bringing that to America was a hurdle not given to me by Americans, but by Indians. So I had to reinvent the wheel at Devi, my restaurant in New York, which got the first Michelin star for any non-Northern European restaurant in North America when the Michelin Guide first came to America, didn't serve that crap. We were serving uh, Jimmy Khan ke kofte, khatte meethe, bagare bengan. We were serving uh, Kashmiri mushroom ke toast, uh, magas ke uh, bruschetta. We were serving gurde kapure. So we were serving the food of the length and breadth of India in beautiful 20, 20th and 21st century plates and bowls and serving them with big, broad smiles. So the hurdles were to tell Indians to rethink, reinvent their imagination and make ghar ka khana acceptable in their head. On the plate, they found it sexy and beautiful. Maake Hat Kahana is delicious, comforting, and memorable. People think of me as an author, chef, and educator. It's the educator in me that poses the greatest challenge and gives me the deepest pleasure. The challenges are that it's not the student that fails me, it's I who am failing the student when the student can't understand what I'm talking. So as an educator, you have to keep remembering that you're living in this moment, you are connecting your cuisine, your language of words to the past, and you are living in the present most wholesomely, most uh, fulfilling a life as you can imagine and make happen, but you're also having to connect it to tomorrow. Will people tomorrow who this student is connecting with, will they find my teaching exciting? Will they understand and comprehend what I'm doing? Will they be excited by it? Will they be charmed by it? Will they find comfort in it? That's the challenge and that challenge is so yummy and delicious and uh, exciting and it's a good challenge that when you see it like that, your Guru Shishya Parampara, the mentor and the mentee can take on a new relationship which is fulfilling for both. I've written three cookbooks, the fourth book called Instamatic, which is a, a pictorial journey of uh, photographs that share life story and then my uh, reactions to those stories of life shared by, with me through a lens. Four books, but then I write a column called Slice of Life. I uh, love writing, I love sharing recipes, I love documenting stories because it's connecting the past to my present and my present to the future and it's my way of giving the life I live a continuum in the future through the lives that read my books, cook my recipes and share them with others. So when I hear the word fusion in India, I'm reminded of Gail Green the high priestess of uh, food criticism in America, or perhaps the world, the greatest food critic who had lived the Amer in the, on the American soil, Gail Green of New York Magazine. For 40 plus years, she reviewed restaurants. And once at my home, Gail said to me, your food is so yummy, what do you call it? 
And I said, you know, people call it fusion, but I'm ashamed of that word. She said, why? Because it's fusion confusion? I said, yes, Gail. And she gave me that term fusion confusion 30 years ago. Fusion is a dirty word in the culinary world. So in my world, you can bring the world of flavors to your table, but you don't fuse them. You respect them for what they are. You celebrate them at your table. You take from each uh, cuisine that you are charmed by techniques and uh, flavors and ingredients that enhance your own cuisine but never 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 think of fusing them because so never fuse things celebrate plurality in your actions whether it's at the table or in your thought and deed My Instagram page, which is my name, eponymous to me, Sweet Saran, at Sweet Saran, is a page that thrived during the lockdown. I had some incredible team members, Vardhan Marwa, Hari Dashwa Malhotra, Priyam Vada, Atma Kuri. Uh, uh, you know, they've all blessed my account with their own lives, their own stories, their own energy, their own thinking. And that is what I want my page to be. It's not about me. I'm a monolith. I'm one person amongst billions on this planet. My page celebrates India. It celebrates the most important ingredient and spice in life, the spice of life. We do fashion, bhi karte, fun, bhi karte, or food. Bhi karte. We do all of it. You know, when I think of the most memorable dining experiences, I have a gazillion. I could name one every second, but since it's Times of India food and I love how you all bring food to the world, it's, it's the world that looks at India. Um, I uh, can remember one, I was still vegetarian and I took Gail Green of uh, New York Magazine to Kareem for her first maiden visit to Kareem in Jama Masjid. What she ate, the, her face, her smile, her energy just kept changing as every bit of kebab and you know, she ate the Sikh kebab and she was almost in tears saying, wow, I've never eaten meat so succulent and tender. Then she ate the barra kebab and she was having a culinary orgasm at the table and I, the vegetarian, was also having them just watching her. Because when you eat real good food, you don't need to say a badiya hai. Your body does a dance, your smile is brighter than ever and Gail Green was having that uh, culinary ecstasy and I was enjoying it through her and I still remember that meal would never ever be forgotten by me and if I had to pick one restaurant where I'd like to dine every day it would be my uh, Casa Saran my mother's kitchen in, in, in New Delhi or the kitchen of most of my friends So you know, the summer is here and I had to make you all something that I love in the summer. Vardhan, my uh, chef and I have just come back from a trip to Hyderabad and Bombay. In Bombay, I broke Vardhan's uh, Haji Ali cherry and he went and ate the uh, mango uh, cream with me at Haji Ali. So I'm making today with Vardhan Marwa, my chef, a date night mango surprise, a perfect dish for a couple to make together to enjoy the madness of the mango season that's right upon us right now. So I'm making uh, this dish that Vardhan and I thought would be a perfect date night dish. So, you know, sit together, be romantic, pretend you're friends, that you enjoy each other, or your friends who are just having a night out. So we're taking some sugar, and the sugar is going into fresh cream. Very little. Vardhan loves too much sugar, I like it delicate. Hey, na, Vardhan? Yeah. And now we'll whisk it, just a little. Just uh, whisk it enough so that the sugar dissolves. Now Vardhan is using a piece of equipment that's called a siphon. You can find them very easily today in India. So I'm just um, using a funnel so that I don't, uh, it doesn't get messy. So, uh, you know, we are not whisking away the cream, that's why we are going to use nitrogen cylinders and that's how this works. So, uh, now we are going to give it a rest and after this I am going to charge it again with another nitrogen cylinder. If you don't have this, you don't have to worry because you can just use a hand uh, blender, hand stand mixer. Or a whisk. Or a you whisk. can be Dadaji, like me, yeah. and whisk. That's why I have the biceps that he doesn't have. Exactly. <laughs> it's 
You are cubing it on the peel itself? Yes, cubing it on the peel just like we used to have it when we were kids after school. This was the best part of summer. So now I'm going to take some uh, mascarpone cheese and make sure that the mangoes are chilled. This is special, special gin I love that's really nuanced and uh, has flavors that are fruity, that are spicy, that are aromatic in ways that make everything more delicious. So, I will add one vardan for you and one for me. We have put it drop, 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 drop. Dal diye. Now, Vardhan, what are we doing? Now comes the next texture, which is dehydrated mango. Okay. Now that we've done the uh, cream, we are grating some dark, dark, dark chocolate. The darker you go, the better. And remember, once you go dark, you never go back. It's the mango ice cream. And that makes it into a mango three-way, really. And it's full of surprises for a date night, and hence the date night mango surprise. Nice, Vardhan. Nice job. You're learning on the job. No, but it's mine. <laughs> so bad. Oof. Uh, so now I'm beginning with the third, you know. I'm bored of him already. <laughs> mm. Date night mango surprise. Yummy, yummy, yummy.